And because I have those eyes to see, I'm going to read the Quran and dismantle it. Many Muslims during that time reached out to me via YouTube. Many followers of mine are Muslim and said, hey, give it a shot. I said, no worries. I'm going to check it out and I'm going to find the devil in your book. Oh. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, this video is long overdue. I read the Quran, the whole Quran, as a Christian. Yeah, I never believed myself that I will ever make such a video, but yes, I did read the whole Quran. Today I'm gonna to tell you about it, but before I start talking about it, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself in case this is the first time for you seeing me. I am a Christian, a Christian Orthodox in fact. My parents are from the Balkans, from Northern Macedonia, and I have been baptized as a Christian Orthodox from birth. Back then, Yugoslavia was still under communist rule, and therefore it was illegal for me to get baptized, so we had a priest coming over to our flat that baptized me undercover, so to speak. So therefore, all of my family members are identified as Christian Orthodox, however, most of them are not practicing like most people nowadays all around the world. People became very secularized and therefore they're not truly practicing Christians in that sense. However, as being Slavs from the Balkan, they of course identify as Christians. The Slavs on the Balkan are predominantly Christian Orthodox. That is due to the reformation of Kirill and Metodi under the Bulgarian Empire at the time. The Slavs used to be pagans and Kirill and Metodi came and reformed the Slavs, so to speak, and brought Christian Orthodoxy from Byzantium over to the Bulgarian Empire. And the rest is history. Since then, the people on the Balkan are very identified culturally with their religions. Most people on the Balkan don't know much about their religions. However, they went to church or went to the mosque and know that they are Christians or Muslims. Of course, this fuels a lot of conflict. For example, me as a Macedonian, I grew up hating the Albanians because the Albanians were our enemy. The Albanians were Muslims and they were our enemy. Of course, there is this big history on the Balkan that we were under the Caliphate, under Ottoman rule for over 500 years. That fuels even more anger against Islam, against Muslims. So I grew up like that. That being said, my parents, yes, they are from Macedonia and every year we would visit. However, I grew up in Germany, in Nordrhein-Westfalen. In Nordrhein-Westfalen, we have a huge Turkish population. So I had a lot of Muslim friends, but at the same time, I observed that most of those Muslim friends got into some sort of criminal activity at the time. Many of them were smoking weed, many of them were selling drugs, many of them were into prostitution, robberies, gang violence and whatnot. So my experience with Muslims was pretty negative after all, I have to say. Therefore, I had no interest whatsoever to look into Islam. I was identified as a Christian and that's that. In my 20s, I kind of let go of my faith and I dabbled in the new age. I started using psychedelic drugs such as mushrooms, LSD, ayahuasca. I explored dietary venues such as veganism, which led me to Buddhism, Hinduism and other pagan religions as well. I got interested in the occult, the Mayan calendar and what not. I let go of Christianity for roughly a decade, I would say, and was identified as nothing, as pure consciousness, if you will. I was just Bobby, just doing my thing. I didn't want to label myself, I just wanted to live life. So I started traveling the world. 2014, I left Germany and I went to Australia, then Indonesia, then Thailand, then back to Australia and New Zealand, over to South America, Machu Picchu in Peru and what not. I visited many, many places, many different cultures, saw different religions and was convinced that religion is just that. Cultural norms that people adhere to and I don't want to be part of 
that. I saw myself as above that, in a sense. I saw myself as the enlightened one that doesn't need any of that. Until I returned back to Europe, to Bulgaria, and I felt that yearning for God. And I felt empty. I felt broken. All of those things that I tried led me nowhere. I felt as if I had failed, I felt abandoned, I felt left alone, so therefore I seeked God. Naturally, I returned to Christian Orthodoxy, and at that time it felt like a homecoming. It felt like something that I used to know, but at the same time have never truly explored. As I said, I was identified as a Christian Orthodox, but I never really studied the religion. So now I return to it and now I really want to know what's up. I really want to understand my own religion. So I started digging deep and I found out about the Trinity. I already made a video about this. Guys, for two years I was battling with this thought and I was trying to understand the Trinity and I was trying to make myself believe the Trinity. But after all, all of those intentions have failed miserably because I couldn't convince myself of a three-headed God. Didn't work. No matter how I looked at it, it just didn't add up, didn't make sense for me and therefore I was quite surprised, honestly quite shocked that my religion entailed that. This was a wake-up call for me because I was seeking God in its unity in its oneness, if you will, and not God as some sort of deity that I cannot comprehend. I always remind myself of the saying, your God is not a God of confusion. So it was very confusing to me, after all. Hence, for the very first time in my life, I considered, you know what, I'm going to read the enemy's book, the Quran. Why not? Because I started watching David Wood videos. And David Wood was so confident in his message that Muhammad was this degenerate guy and Islam was this evil, evil religion coming from Satan himself. The biggest deception known to mankind, the real Antichrist, is Islam. So I got convinced even more about my own faith. I became arrogant, pompous. I said, God brought me back to orthodoxy, the real religion. He brought me back to the truth. And now I can truly see that Islam is from the devil. And because I have those eyes to see, I'm going to read the Quran and dismantle it. Many Muslims during that time reached out to me via YouTube. Many followers of mine are Muslim and said, hey, give it a shot. I said, no worries. I'm going to check it out and I'm going to find the devil in your book. So I opened the Quran and I started reading. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. That was surprising to me. It really was. I know to most Muslims this is simply common sense. They're wondering what I'm talking about. But for me as a Christian, I didn't remember a page in the Bible that addresses God like that first. I kept on reading and I noticed that every surah, every chapter starts like that. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. And I was impressed. I thought, yeah, that makes sense. You should address God first. You should give praise to the Lord first before you start talking about him. That makes sense. I couldn't find anything like that in the Bible. Now, I don't want to discredit the Bible because the Bible is very, very different than the Quran. The Bible is more like a library and not so much like one book. The Quran, on the other hand, is exactly that. The Quran is one concise book, one manual, if you will, much shorter than the Bible. The Bible is a diverse variety of different books, of different advices, and doesn't even claim to be the word of God at all times, but much more a compilation of divinely inspired books put together by the church fathers. And that is fine. The Bible itself is an epic tale with an abundance of knowledge. It's absolutely beautiful to read. However, the Quran is much more concise, much more simplistic if you will, even repetitive, I have to say. But nevertheless, the message is crystal clear. By reading the Quran itself, it doesn't posture up or pose as something else. It simply says what it is. It comes as a guidance. It comes as a clarification for those that want to see. Again, very, very powerful, I have to say. 
So I continued reading. So devote yourself to the religion of monotheism. The natural instinct, Allah, God, has instilled in mankind. Yet again, simple but powerful. It rings true to me. It makes sense that we have a natural disposition in which we seek God. I think anybody can relate to that. When you were a child, most of us, we knew that there was a God. The oneness of God was crystal clear to us. We didn't think about other deities. We didn't think about a three-headed God system. With this, I already agree. I want to make that very, very clear here. I do not believe in the Trinity yet again, even as a Christian. That doesn't add up to me. That doesn't make sense. Therefore, when this natural predisposition is described within the Quran, it resonates with me and it makes sense. Even in Hinduism, you have the Brahmin. The Brahmin is the Godhead. And out of that Godhead, all the other deities come forth. In Christianity, we would call it angels and demons. The Muslims would call them jinns. However, the Hindus went down the path, similar to the pagans, of worshipping those deities and making gods out of them. But naturally, that doesn't make sense. The origin of all things is, of course, a oneness, is a singularity of sorts, so to speak, where everything collapses, where everything originates. Yet again, the Alpha and the Omega, this is crystal clear to us. I always thought that it's crystal clear to all Christians. I really didn't believe that Christians think about God in a trinity, in a fashion of a trinity. I don't think that anybody truly does anyways, to be honest. When you're praying to God, how do you imagine God? How do you think of God? How do you remember God? How do you even believe in God, in a God that is three-headed, in a God that consists of three deities? That doesn't add up to me. Anyways, I continued reading. Whoever strives, strives only for himself. Allah, God, is independent of the beings. And again, I had to admit, powerful man, powerful. God is beyond all beings. He is not the creation. For me, naturally, instinctively, that is crystal clear. But moreover, as I said, I had psychedelic experiences. I went to the Amazon jungle and I drank the ayahuasca with the shamans, with the indigenous people in South America. And I experienced the oneness of God over there as well. God himself is beyond all comprehension. God himself is beyond all beings. He is indeed the only reality. This is the way that I saw God, that I experienced God to this very day. Nothing else is real but God. And that already excludes a trinity. And of course, it excludes any type of being. Even the messengers of God, even though they are exalted figures, are nothing but that. Exalted figures, creations of the Almighty. That is crystal clear to me. And when I saw it in the Quran, I was shocked. Yes, I was shocked. Because Islam for me was a violent religion, a religion of the enemy, a religion of the devil, not a religion of the oneness of God. The oneness of God that everybody comprehends. Even my father, who is a Christian Orthodox, he doesn't go to church. He never read the Bible. When I ask him about God, he tells me that God is one, that God is the most powerful. He understands that too intuitively. And I am of the firm conviction, sue me, but that you don't have to be an intellectual in order to understand God. Intellectualism, study, doctor titles, all of that is fine here on earth in this creation. And you can impress other people with it. But instinctive understanding is embedded in you. And even a beggar can understand God within. That's how I see it. And therefore, the Quran confirmed that. For me, it was quite shocking, however, to realize after reading the Quran that most Muslims that I've met in my life, not all, but most Muslims that I met in my life, actually didn't follow the Quran at all. Actually, weren't even considered real 
Muslims. The Quran talked about humility. The Quran talked against being boastful. The Quran talked about no compulsion in religion. The Quran talked about that God guides who he wills and that you shouldn't argue about faith. The Quran even talked about that everything will be clarified once we are returned to God. Moreover, the Quran said that if God willed it, we all would have had the same religion. But God wills it otherwise. Most of us have different religions and we argue and we debate and we discuss about it. But in the end, we will stand in front of our Lord and he will clarify it for us. You don't take your religion to the other side, man. The religion is here for us to guide us, to make us better people. Once we face God, all of that evaporates. All of those human conceptualization ends and we face the ultimate truth, the only truth, which is God, of course. Another powerful message yet again is, it is Allah's pattern, ongoing since the past. You will never find any change in Allah's pattern. That sentence really struck home because it showed the beautiful simplicity of the message. God's way is always the same. There is no change in the way, in the pattern of God. It is always the same, always accessible, the same way. And that, of course, made me think a lot about my own faith and about Christianity. Thinking about the sacrifice of Jesus for us, him being crucified so our sins can be forgiven, made me truly think about the people before him and people that didn't hear the message, etc, etc. Out of a sudden, I realized that there must be a red line, a clear underlaying reality that is always the same. Meaning that if you're alone in the jungle and you never heard about any type of religion, there must be this natural religion that is instilled within you. This understanding of the worship of one supreme being. That made all the sense in the world yet again. So now I've been rambling for quite some time and I still didn't clarify if I found the devil within the Quran. Guys, needless to say, I obviously didn't find the devil within the Quran, but I found many, many warnings about the devil. The Quran warns multiple times about the devil. It clarifies how sneaky the devil is. It warns you of the devil and it glorifies God over and over and over again. Honestly, I tried to find the devil in the detail, but I failed. I couldn't find the devil within that scripture, no matter how hard I looked. Now, looking back, I really wonder where a David Wood is getting his information from. It's quite interesting because I was following David Wood for roughly one and a half years and he was so adamant in his work warning all the people of bad, bad Islam. But after reading the Quran, I couldn't find the devil in it. I couldn't find the evil in it that was proclaimed by all the Christian apologists. I couldn't find the maliciousness, the perversion within the Quran. I found a concise, clear message within it. So now, after giving the Quran so much praise, you're probably wondering why I'm not converting to Islam already. Already become a Muslim, Bobby. I saw it in the comment section before, because I do have respect for the religion. Guys, as I said, culturally, I'm a Christian Orthodox. I'm from the Balkan. I'm a Slav. And this is the religion that I was brought up with. In my heart, I know God is one. In my heart, I know that creation is creation and the creator is the creator. Nothing can change that. The Quran confirmed that. It didn't change my mind. However, as I said, over the years, I have been exploring many, many different ideologies. And by now, it is already one year in of me studying Islam. I have not only read the Quran, but I started reading Hadiths and I have looked into the different conceptualizations of God, into what Tawhid means, the Fitra, and so much more. This time around, I'm taking my time. 
This is not an emotional decision. I have to learn much, much more about the religion and about the customs and the practices of Islam before I truly decide to change my whole religion. Because at the moment, I am in a very happy place. Intuitively, my natural religion is intact. Culturally, yes, yet again, I'm a Christian Orthodox. Intuitively, I'm following God's will. I'm following God's path with no ifs and buts, with nothing surrounding him, the only truth. Nothing changed about that. As I said, the Quran was a beautiful confirmation of exactly that. I will see where God guides me to. Until then, I welcome every single one of you in the comment section. Let me know about your faith. Let me know about your understanding of God. Let me know if you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you're Jewish, if you're Hindu, or if you're Buddhist even. Let me know what your perspective is, and we can discuss it in the comment section. Right, this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. All right, this is it for today. A long one. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.